Albrecht Stenzinger, Heidelberg University Hospital. Clinical implications of PDL1 copy number alterations. Crazy Identification stuff. of core genetic regions, correlations with gene expression, and mutational loads across 22 major cancer types. Long title, three minutes, crazy stuff. Thanks for coming. Um, so, what I would like to discuss with you uh, today is uh, biomarkers and uh, immunotherapy. As you all know, immunotherapy has gained great attention over the last couple of years uh, and working by actually inhibiting the PD-1, PD-L1 axis so that T cells are capable of effectively killing um, tumor cells. Now that works greatly, as you can see here, among many cancer types, but the problem is that we don't know which patients actually benefit most from that uh, kind of therapy. So, the um, problem here uh, is obviously that there are a couple of patients who benefit greatly, although they do not show pd one expression, which is the current biomarker in use. Whereas other patients that show strong expression of the biomarker um, do not respond at all. So that's not very uh, convincing. And as you can see here, the antibodies in use for immunohistochemical staining show greatly diverse results for the um, um, uh, creating problems here. So the question is, can cancer genetics guide immunotherapy? And uh, actually, we think, yes, that's the case. So what we did is a very straightforward mechanism of pd one expression is certainly um, copy number gains that would induce on a genetic level the expression of pd one And actually, what you can see here is across 10,000 tumors and uh, 22 cancer types that this is the case. So there is... Uh, a certain subset of cancer cells and uh, tumors that do show amplification of the gene. And that nicely correlates, uh, at least for most cancers, with uh, PD-1 expression, and we also think that this might confer some true um, oncogenic property, just like HER2 um, amplification in breast cancer. Now, that also correlates with mutational load, uh, potentially predicting neoantigens, and that is also an important cornerstone for that kind of therapy. Uh, it also uh, has some um, relations with uh, survival. Now, the interesting question is, does it make sense? Does it have any implications in a true clinical setting? And that's a case of a patient with a cancer of unknown primary. Uh, this lady underwent a couple of therapies beforehand and really had a huge metastatic burden. And what we found was a significant PDL1 amplification accompanied by high expression of PDL1. And these are the results after a uh, 12 uh, month of therapy. So uh, this lady is uh, at almost near to complete remission. Thank you.